So when you guys graph exponential functions, these are just the graphs that correspond with um, things in life that are increasing or decreasing exponentially. Um, so they are going to like go up pretty rapidly or decrease pretty rapidly. So an exponential function has a form of a times b to the x. So your exponent has to be a variable. That's all that's saying. And the base is a positive number other than 1 because if you just multiply 1 over and over again, it doesn't change anything. So your growth functions have a base that needs to be greater than 1. So when that base of your exponent is greater than 1, that is a growth function and the base is actually your growth factor, what it's being multiplied by. If your base is less than 1, that would be a decay function and the base value that you're multiplying over and over again would be your decay factor. So your graphs, exponential graphs, have these asymptotes or limits also. So as you, again, change or add numbers to the end of your equation, it's not just going to be at zero, but they have these asymptotes that create limits or boundaries that your graphs approach. So when it is a growth factor or a growth function, your graph goes towards or away from your asymptote. When it's a decay function, it goes towards your asymptote. So that's kind of the difference between the two. So decay, your graph goes towards. So again, horizontal asymptote, just a limit, a value um, that your graph approaches. So growth goes away from your horizontal asymptote as you move from left to right. Decay functions go towards your horizontal asymptote from left to right. Um, for these graphs, they're always going to be continuous left to right. So the domain is always going to be negative to positive infinity, and the range will be based off your horizontal asymptote, wherever that ends up being.